The question you have to ask is this, would Russia have tried to run a big operation to infiltrate the White House with a guy like Trump and a gaggle of unprofessional people like Roger Stone and Paul Manafort? The answer is most likely not, but we don't have enough information yet and we probably will never get all the information about that. The United States empire is a lot bigger than the puppet in the White House and the risk is just too high for uh, a nation like Russia. If you listen carefully, you'll notice Roger Stone sounds like his own lawyer when he talks about certain things. He dramatically declared he will never betray Trump and he has never discussed a possible pardon with Trump. But maybe he discussed it with some intermediaries. And maybe these intermediaries are now double-checking their communication logs and what Roger Stone might have on them. Stone was released on a $250,000 bail, gave a press conference and was interrupted, then gave another press conference and some exclusive but empty statements to Alex Jones's Infowars. Mueller might have enough material to level new charges against Stone in the future. If Stone gets pardoned after a few years in jail, another indictment could put him right back in jail. This reminds us of Paul Manafort, who rots in prison, yet there are more possible charges that he can be indicted with so Mueller has more Mueller has more ammo Stone makes it sound like the Mueller investigation is somehow not legitimate a coup by the left a rogue operation and he compares himself to the victims of Soviet Russia who ended up in a gulag the Soviet Russia comparison may just be simple hype and a jab at the left uh, deep state in the US uh, as uh, it's being referred to but his old lobby firm did work for third world dictators who really tortured innocents in nightmare jails. Um, but there is more to it that maybe Stone does not understand at all. So just to get this out of the way, Manafort got convicted with real evidence, not for Russian collusion yet, but Mueller got him on other things, which is by the books, whether you like it or not. Stone, during his career, was shilling for Nixon, the Bush clan, and indirectly for the skull and bones circles who gave massive support to the Soviets through technology sales. Does Mr. Stone know that? Well, we know that Alex Jones knows this because he Jones is aware of the works of Anthony Sutton and even sold Sutton's book on skull and bones in the Infowars store. Maybe Jones ate too much chili again and forgot. Even though Stone was a complete fool contradicting his own emails to the Mueller investigation, Infowars still stands behind Stone. Is Infowars just loyal or stupid? Or do they have something bigger to lose? Washington Post is now asking the surprising question whether the hiring of Jerome Corsi at Infowars was a hidden hush money payment of $15,000 per month to keep Corsi from testifying something hairy. It should be a straightforward answer to this question, like, no, we just hired him as a worker, then we fired him, but instead we get this weird song and dance that's all too familiar. Nobody seems to be able to get their story straight, everybody has terrible memory, Alex Jones recently said his father just does H&R and taxes and has nothing to do with the news and doesn't have anything to do with anything, and Mueller is way out of line to target the old Mr. Jones. Then we got the admission... In, in, in this, uh, I think it was even this uh, Washington Post story, we got the admission that Daddy sort of, kind of, had this fake news project planned with Corsi and handled those payments, apparently, allegedly. Now there is a subpoena for Infowars communications with Corsi and about Corsi. Depositions might be next and there will be hell if so some serious discrepancies arise. Roger Stone was busted, going back and forth between people about WikiLeaks, but WikiLeaks dropping the payload that would damage the Hillary campaign. After he got arrested, he whined about CNN and others having waited at his place for the show to start. So, did some journalists from the mainstream media exchange communications with a source familiar with the investigation about the payload coming, meaning the arrest of Stone? So, it's a double standard, and, um... 
remember, Stone, Stone could have, uh, Stone could have made statements to the investigators that fit his emails, his communications. He could have made sure that this statement aligns with his emails. Yet there are glaring contradictions. Uh, and Roger Stone says that's all fine and dandy, but um, it doesn't look good. So if so, that's why these charges are for lying and obstructing and even witness tampering. These are serious charges that could put him away for a, I think, a maximum of 45 years. And the question is, will he, will Stone cooperate with Mueller? And remember this nonsense about Agent Q or QAnon, there's supposed to be this wave of arrests coming of Hillary Clinton and people from her orbit. Instead, people from Trump's orbit get sweeped up, convicted, and put in jail on a regular basis. Now, Alex Jones and others may scream that this is a left coup to steal the White House and there will be civil war if Trump gets removed, but it was Jones who used to teach his audience that both parties work for the same people and are rather smart. Nobody totally would expect Mueller to use golden evidence publicly against the President of the United States. You know, perfect smoking gun evidence regarding collusion. That would be, just be too big. It's easier to just control Trump and find a solution that placates the Trump voters. It's easier to um, build a parallel case and maybe get Trump on something smaller. Again, would Russia have tried to run a big operation to infiltrate the White House with a guy like Trump and a gaggle of unprofessional people like Roger Stone and Paul Manafort? Answer, most likely not, but we don't have all the information yet and we will most likely never get all the information about that. The United States empire is a lot bigger than the puppet in the White House and the risk for Russia is just too high. And Alex Jones should know that not only Russian intelligence can play long cons, uh, long operations, uh, US intelligence is well aware that many wealthy Russians transfer their money to Western banks and some buy Western real estate. Maybe Trump asked some CIA contacts discreetly many years ago whether he could do business with Russians or not. And maybe the answer was, sure, lure them in, we'll do the rest. So... Roger Stone Roger Stone is now out uh, for the t out of prison for the time being. He can't leave the country. And there's going to be a huge court case. And uh, the uh, Austin American Statesman newspaper says Roger Stone is flat broke and is uh, Roger Stone is surviving on a salary from Infowars. And uh, this um, this court case would cost Roger Stone about two million dollars. That's the estimation. Two million dollars to, uh, well, most likely just to get a smaller sentence. Now many experts are talking about this right now and the consensus of those people who speak somewhat freely and not politically, the consensus seems to be that um, Roger Stone is cooked. So he's going to get convicted of this stuff. That's the um, estimation, that's the guess. He's cooked, he's going to get convicted of uh, most, if not all, of these charges and he's going to go to prison and the only question remains is for how long? And so Roger Stone would have to spend two million dollars to get the shortest possible jail sentence, but these are two million dollars he just does not have. And wealthy folks out there and uh, political class out there, Republican circles, they're not exactly excited to foot the bill for Roger Stone, but there's always the question of what does Roger Stone have on other people. Stone is not an idiot, he's a self-confessed dirty trickster, and yes, he's worked at his old lobby firm, worked for dictators in the third world, he's also helped uh, a, Bush, uh, a Bush to become president, he's also helped Nixon, and so on and so forth. It's a real 
mess. And it's hard to grasp that Stone was stupid enough to talk like he did in emails and media appearances and then make contradictory statements about it to the investigators. Now that famous excerpt from the indictment, um, on multiple occasions, Roger Stone told somebody else, who is important in this whole affair, told somebody else th that this other person should do a frank pentangeli before the HPSCI in order to avoid contradicting Stone's testimony. Frank Pentangeli is a character in the film The Godfather Part 2, which both Stone and person number two had discussed, who testifies before a congressional committee, and in the testimony claims not to know critical information that he does in fact know. Why, Roger? Why were you so stupid? Doesn't he understand technology? I mean, he's, he's an older guy, didn't grow up with technology. Emails are like postcards when you send them unencrypted and uh, even using an erasing tool is no guarantee they won't be re reconstructed. Of course, the NSA might have copies of everything. Well, turns out Roger Stone is Roger Stone is only semi-retarded when it comes to communication. And we are learning this from the indictment. I quote, later that day, the supporter involved with the Trump campaign asked Stone via text message if he had heard any more from London, most likely referring to Julian Assange from WikiLeaks. Stone replied, yes, want to talk on a secure line, got WhatsApp, question mark. So Roger Stone knows that WhatsApp is at least encrypted, but he probably has not read Wired magazine about the popular messaging app. It was this uh, security conference in uh, Zurich, Switzerland, and a group of researchers from Germany, uh, they displayed, demonstrated a series of flaws in encrypted messaging apps, including WhatsApp, Signal, and Threema. They say that anyone who controls WhatsApp's servers could effortlessly, <clears throat> effortlessly insert new people into an otherwise private group, even without the permission of the administrator who ostensibly controls access to that conversation. The confidentiality of the group is broken as soon as the uninvited member can obtain all the new messages and read them. And then, of course, the United States government has tracking viruses, infecting phones, grabbing conversations before they get encrypted. So how stupid exactly was Roger Stone while he was using WhatsApp? And will we find out in the future? Amy Berman Jackson, the same judge who presided in the case brought against Manafort in Washington, and <laughs> we know how that went, will be the judge overseeing Stone's case. Manafort, who used to blow vast sums of money on luxury items, and once did lobby work with Roger Stone for third world dictators, is now rotting in jail. So, uh, before you cry, cry a river for Roger Stone, remember he, his uh, old lobby firm worked for brutal dictators, and Roger Stone also helped a Bush to get elected and uh, helped Nixon, who was a complete tool of the Rockefellers, uh, according to many people's opinion. Remember that classic um, quality conspira uh, conspiracy um, literature? The book by Gary Allen about the left-right paradigm and this... Nixon charade, how uh, this whole system is controlled. Well, that book used to be the influence, or was a huge influence, in the career of Alex Jones. So Jones should know better. So, it's no wonder Jerome Corsi, not explicitly named in the indictment, but <laughs> pretty sure it's him, and he kind of confirmed it already. Uh, Corsi was running for the hills. Roger Stone was either stupid and careless, or he tried to get other people in trouble. And look how aggressive Stone could be with person number two, believed to be Randy Credico. So, uh, person number two, believed to be Credico, basically told Stone, uh, what, what in the name of the devil are you doing? What, what, what are you going to say? What, just tell it like it is, man. And Credico kind of sort of, uh, Credico kind of sort of, uh, said that he would, um, you know, he would be straight about this. And then those two got really angry. Um, Stone called him a rat. Stone called him a stoolie. You backstab your friends, run your mouth, my lawyers are dying to rip you to shreds. 
I will take that dog away from you. I am so ready. Let's get it on. Prepare to die, mother... Or some other... Um, curse word that's not identified in the indictment. So then person number two writes back, You should have just been honest with the House Intel Committee. You've opened yourself up to perjury charges like an idiot. Stone responded, You are so full of bleep, you got nothing, keep running your mouth, and I'll file a bar complaint against your friend, the, meaning the attorney who had the ability to contact the head of Organization One, believed to be Wikileaks. So, yeah, Roger can get pretty angry, he's got a temper, right? Okay, it, it's about an important thing, but maybe person number two had some good advice, and uh, Roger Stone commented... Roger Stone commented on this excerpt and said it was taken out of context, you know, he and person number two always talked like this, they've had a relationship for many, many years, and uh, that's just the way they talk. Right? Prepare to die, mother effer, and uh, I'm gonna take your dog, I'm gonna destroy you with my lawyers. Of course, Roger Stone declared himself not to be guilty of the charges, and underscores that the charges contain nothing about Russian collusion. So why does it look like he was lying to the investigators if he has nothing to hide? I suspect Mueller has more possible charges against Stone. Charges so far is serious enough, Stone keeps his mouth shut and does not roll over, there may be more charges. If Stone gets pardoned by Trump, there will be more charges. And then there might not be a Trump president <laughs> anymore uh, in 2020. There might not be a, a, a Trump president anymore or at a later point, so <coughs> maybe this pardon is not going to happen. So, and this dumpster fire has already reached the InfoWars office, with Alex Jones being subpoenaed for communications with Jerome Corsi. And Alex Jones is expecting to get indicted as well. So, are we gullible enough to believe the spin that Stone was only bragging and barely involved? If he was just huffing and puffing, why couldn't he get a story straight? How many voters do you think InfoWars mobilized in 2016 to vote Trump, especially when InfoWars blew the WikiLeaks material out of proportion? Like with Pizzagate, but and spun everything and anything to benefit Trump in the typical Roger Stone style. And, um, of course, um, I'm worried about um, where things are going with the United States and the loss of liberties and the, and the police state and foreign, um, foreign conflicts and, and uh, uh, the, the, the uh, rise of socialism and, and everything about that, I'm worried as well. And lying about all of this, Stone business, Alex Jones, Trump business, lying about this is not going to help America. It's not going to change anything with Roger Stone and his uh, court case. It's not going to change anything with what's going to happen with Alex Jones. It's not going to change anything that's uh, going to happen with uh, President Trump. I said from the very beginning, there's no reason to trust Trump. He had no credibility with conservatives. He had no credibility with the conspiracy crowd, the conspiracy buffs, uh, the conspiracy-minded people. He had zero credibility, had a ton of baggage, and he was picking his talking points according to psychometrics. The algorithms determined what people wanted to hear. Build a wall. Push back socialism. Um, drain the swamp. You know, America first. Jobs, jobs, jobs. All, you know, all legitimate agenda points, but this was just picked according to psychometrics, what people wanted to hear. So Trump campaign said what people wanted to hear, even though Trump had... Uh, no credibility, and he had no real support net, and he had no real means of making this stuff happen. Yes, there's been some changes with jobs, and we said this was going to happen. This would be kind of a repetition of Operation uh, Reagan. That would be new jobs, um, some good changes, but at the same time, there would be more debt. What do we see? Some... Minor interesting changes, but more debt. So my prediction uh, was uh, pretty much spot on. And also, um, and also, all this 
baggage that Trump came with. All, all this baggage meant the danger of control over Trump from the very beginning. You think this stuff, this sort of stuff that's, you know, coming out, you think that's all? You think that's, um, that's news to anybody, you know, in, in elite circles? No. They knew who Trump was from the very beginning. And, um, the, the establishment had many ways of blocking Trump from the White House. The establishment had many ways of controlling Trump. The establishment had many ways of putting somebody else in the White House. You know, just, just throw the election for the Republicans, put another Democrat in, end of story. The empire goes on. But of course, there was also the option of controlling Trump from the very start. And, you know, the empire goes on. I've been warning about this and... At some point, for some not really explained reason, at some point, Alex Jones and other uh, Alex Jones and other media people suddenly started to glorify Trump and to make all these promises and to repeat the promises from the Trump campaign to sell this man as America's hope, as uh, conservative hope and uh, patriotic hope and all that stuff. But nobody could point at at things. Nobody could point at things in Trump's life that would give us confidence about his intentions and his abilities. You couldn't point at anything, really, to, to show and demonstrate that Trump, uh, was, Trump was willing to risk anything for the average American, uh, that Trump was, you know, caring about the average folk out there. And that Trump was, there was no real evidence, there was nothing in, in, in Trump's past you could point to that would uh, give us confidence in his ability and his will to understand conspiracies and to uh, unravel real conspiracies. So the only thing we really got was a bunch of tweets and a bunch of promises, wow, uh, some stuff about uh, the Saudis and 9-11 will be released and blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, when Trump was in office, uh, we saw these massive arms sales being greenlit for or of Saudi Arabia. So uh, don't fall into this trap of thinking that you have to lie about this Stone situation and the Trump and the Alex Jones situation, that you have to lie constantly and you have to lie to everybody and you have to lie to yourself that this lying would help America. It's not going to help America. So... Austin American Statesman says Roger Stone is flat broke. Alex Jones could be broke soon, especially if Alex Jones gets indicted. Indi if Alex Jones gets indicted as well by Mueller. And this uh, Austin American Statesman story was handed by, handled by Jonathan Tylov, who covered already uh, in the past the custody case of Jones and Jones's ex-wife. Why am I mentioning this? Not just because this was a really nasty situation and still is. And it's not helping America. It's not going to help your future if you uh, lie about that case. But I'm mentioning it because this will come or could come back to haunt Alex Jones. Not just because Alex Jones has so many lawsuits against him right now, and these lawsuits are eating up his money, um, but also Alex Jones's ex-wife. If I, Alex Jones's ex-wife, if I remember correctly, she offered testimony. Her testimony, and she publicly offered, or she uh, sent information, allegations to various law enforcement agencies, I believe also the FBI, concerning the custody case. Because uh, she made the accusation that this uh, case, this custody case, was not by the books. So... Um, so uh, Alex Jones, Alex Jones might go broke. He might end up in prison for 20 years. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. And um, 
And uh, it's unclear if Roger Stone will give up maybe Steve Bannon or Jones or whatever. I've seen his Stone's statements from after the arrest, and they're not exactly an invitation for a deal with Mueller. He just says if if he's totally cornered through evidence, he will have to tell the truth to avoid even more charges. Uh, nothing more so far. He also signals to powerful people, I need some help, maybe a pardon would be nice. And of course, Stone made this mafia reference in his emails, the uh, Godfather reference. Godfather movie reference. Well, and Alex Jones should have known he should not have made himself, Jones should not have made himself so vulnerable with these Sandy Hook reports. There were many ways to legitimately cover Sandy Hook, even speculation about dirty tricks. But come on, guys. Imagine if instead Hillary Clinton had sued Alex Jones for the Clinton murder conspiracies that are floating out there. That court case would, would be pure gold even if Jones lost. But no, uh, it's Sandy Hook parents. Alex Jones is supposed to go after powerful people, public figures like Hillary Clinton. And these public figures are not that are not that protected by by the laws. You can go further in making accusations and insinuations and speculation. You can speculate about this, this whole Clinton murders thing, you know, all these people dropping debts around in Clintons. And not everything that's been presented, of course, in the web is uh, accurate, but there's, you know, b enough interesting stuff there. He, Jones is supposed to go after these powerful public figures, but no, he went after Sandy Hook parents. Man! So Jones uh, has Jones has to pay Jones has to pay so much money to his lawyers. I think it's round about fifteen lawsuits against him right now plus a possible Mueller indictment, which is even more serious. And um, these individual lawsuits, uh, in several cases, have more than one person suing. So if Jones loses one of these cases, he might have to pay two people, three people, four people, and they're all demanding like a million dollar each, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly. So it's here a million, there a million, 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 million. Of course, that's more than Alex Jones has. And uh, these uh, Sandy Hook parents, they've made it clear on multiple occasions. They just want, uh, they just want Jones to shut up. They want to know the world that uh, these people. They want to know that they want to know. They, excuse me. They want to uh, want the world to know. That uh, they are not crisis actors. They're n they're not just playing a role. These are real people, and um, they want to uh, end the sort of nonsense that's been going on, this harassment that's been going on by various individuals out there who may or may not have listened to the Alex Jones show. And Jones tends to afford top dollar lawyers, especially against his ex-wife. So he's already spent a lot of money to uh, against his ex-wife, and this money maybe probably came from the InfoWars supporters. And then you have to ask yourself, do these lawyers really act in the best, entries, uh, best interests of Jones? I mean, uh, some of these lawyers are really connected, and um, that might be a problem. So the Austin American Statesman says Stone Roger Stone says he had lost his life and health insurance, sold his car, cashed out on a small account he had from book sales, and had no stocks or bonds. You guys have kept me alive, he said, of his salary from InfoWars. Now I don't know, maybe he's got some hidden money stashed away, I'm just speculating. Who knows? Who knows, maybe Alex Jones has some m m rainy day money stashed away somewhere, I'm just speculating. Well, 
And then Alex Jones said Infowars had been taking in $45 million a year. And we'll be lucky if it's $30 million this year. So it's a notable drop in uh, sales or revenue. <clears throat> drop from $45 million down to barely $30 million. Which is a bit surprising given that... Um, Infowars fans, supporters have been pretty loyal so far. You know, they've uh, bought all this stuff from Infowars for the mission, for the cause to save America. And what they got for their money was a lot of questionable Trump propaganda and, and it, well, Jones flipping on a lot of key issues such as internment camps, the whole police state and um, and some other important things. And he flipped on Russia, starting 2008, of course. And I... I was rather expecting Jones supporters, Infowar supporters, to um, buy more stuff. You know, to save Alex and to save the mission and to save whatever. Uh, but no, it's a significant drop in revenue. Alex Jones is quoted with the words, I'm going to have to start laying people off. <clears throat> and, of course, it's uh, it's a bit questionable to me how they spend their money so far, right? I mean, sure, uh, forget spending all that money uh, to fight his ex-wife and forget for a moment the Rolex watches and the houses and the cars and uh, the grand piano. Uh, that he bought and some other things. Uh, forget that for a minute. But you have to ask yourself, where is the good journalism at Infowars? You know, where are the text stories? Where is the where is the content really? Um, they have so many. They had so many people hired, and they were coming and going, hiring and firing, and uh, there's there's not that much output these days. Sure, it's a lot of video, it's, an, it's a show by, you know, this destroyer guy, Jones doing his show, and uh, uh, some other programs over there, but it's mostly the same stuff. It's one place. Infowars is this one place, and these people in there, they cover the same stuff, they think the same way, they have to follow Alex Jones's uh, general line. And so, th there's not really... Uh, there's not re really, you know, enough quality content coming from that place. You know, where where is all that money going? I mean, for that kind of money, $45 million a year in revenue, you should be able to afford experts who can really research and who can really, um, you know, up the quality and can find out that Trump was never to be trusted. <clears throat> um, I, I mean, I've been I've been looking for stories concerning Roger Stone. I've been looking on Infowars, and what I found was just a few videos embedded from the show. They don't even bother to make text stories anymore. I don't know if they still have people really working on text stories. They just copy and paste stuff from external websites. So then, Alex Jones is quoted. Jones is quoted with the words, I make about $2 million a year, and I pay it all to lawyers after taxes. Well, uh... So, well, if, if you build a business over that many years, if you invest all this work, sure, it's, uh, you know, somewhat understandable if he takes out a $2 million salary and he keeps maybe half of it or maybe more than half of it after taxes. I mean, he has to pay for extra security and all that because, of the, you know, with money comes, of course, new challenges and, uh, uh, well, you're more vulnerable, you're more of a target, so you have to be able to afford lawyers, you have to be able to afford security. So this is not about, this is not about envy, right? I supported Infowars until 2008. Then I tolerated them until like 2012, and then it all went downhill from there. 
Um, and they used to be good. They used to be outside the left-right paradigm. They used to tell it like it was. They used to uh, do some proper research. And um, I did support them. I did support them. I had, uh, I think, even I had two subscriptions. I bought products from the stores. Had the, had the stuff shipped to Germany, you know. Uh, and then, of course, I translated Jones's documentaries and made those available. And so, the problem is not that Jones has a salary, right? Um, how long can he afford to pay his lawyers for these Sandy Hook lawsuits, the other lawsuits, and then maybe even a Mueller indictment? So he could sell his uh, studios, he might sell his cars, his grand piano, his Rolexes, and... Well, he better hope there's not going to be another divorce. Um, so this does not look good at all for him. He's got a bit of a joker. He's got a bit of a a wild card, a Trump card, so to say. He can still get voters for Trump, twenty twenty. But so so that's something Alex could. Alex could try to convert into money again, more money, right? So listen, I have two million, three million core audience, uh, two or three million people. I, I can just, you know, push hard and get them to vote in 2020 for Trump or if Trump runs again. So, well, that's kind of... That's, that, that's kind of something, yeah, but uh, th this depends, of course, if, uh, depends on whether or not Trump actually runs again or can run again. And also, um, Alex Jones' audience would, Alex Jones' audience would probably vote for Trump anyway, even if Alex, even if Alex became cautious about Trump. So this might even become a bigger problem if Alex uh, Jones turns on Trump. This might make Alex's audience angry and then they don't buy his stuff anymore and then, you know, there's even less money. So many, many people out there make the same kind of PR for Trump. Many media people out there who uh, sound kind of like Infowars for, for, for the most part. And conservatives, conservatives have no alternative but to vote uh, Republican, or they see no other alternative, they see no better choice than to vote conservative, to vote Republican. <sighs> then we learn from the Austin American statesman, uh, one of the former employees, I think it's uh, Mr. Jacobson, one of the former employees wants Infowars, ex-Infowars ex employees wants to testify against Jones. And this person is requesting whistleblower protection to get around the non-disclosure agreement. So this refers to, I think, the Sandy Hook uh, stuff and uh, this kind of stuff. And maybe, maybe former employees will also testify or maybe have to testify when there is a future Mueller indictment against Alex Jones, and there is going to be his court case against Alex Jones. Then we might see ex-employees of Alex testifying, testifying against Alex because ex-employees tend to be ex-employees uh, tend to be angry at Jones, and we've seen that with a BuzzFeed story quoting ex-employees anonymously, and what they had to say was not good at all. And of course, I mentioned uh, Jones's ex-wife also publicly. Jones's ex-wife uh, publicly offered to testify, and she's given some information regarding her custody case uh, to the authorities. So maybe this is something that Mueller could use against Alex Jones. Um. Yeah, then we saw Corsi, Jerome Corsi, affirming that information about him in, Stone, in the Stone indictment is accurate. 
Quote, I do agree that Roger wanted me to find out from WikiLeaks, he said. I never had any contact with Julian Assange directly or indirectly, so my communications with Roger in July and August 2016 about what I thought Assange had were really just speculation on my part connecting the dots. Last week, Corsi's lawyer Larry Clayman said that although it's clear Corsi is being investigated by a grand jury, he does not believe Corsi will be indicted. And then, of course, there's a subpoena requesting uh, communications from Infowars regarding Jerome Corsi. And this could end really badly. Nobody forced Alex Jones to work with Corsi and Roger Stone. Nobody forced Infowars to become. Uh, nobody forced Infowars to become these huge shells for Trump and this whole hype, this whole hype train that's now, of course, derailed and uh, is now on fire. This whole hype train suggesting that this lone guy, Donald, can save America or wants to save America. But we've learned so far that Trump did not want to become president, he wanted second place behind Hillary. To use that free advertisement for a Trump television network. That was his game plan. For some reason that changed. The establishment could have prevented Trump from entering the White House. In all probability, the establishment controlled Trump from the very start. And as I said, maybe years ago, Trump, before his Russian investments, before his Russian contacts, maybe Trump asked uh, some, maybe Trump asked some CIA contact, hey, if this is okay if I do some Russian business and maybe the answer was sure go ahead don't get caught doing anything you know um, and uh, let us handle the rest you know let the NSA and the CIA handle the rest we'll be in the background invisibly looking at these Russians you just lure them in Donald into the Trump Tower and leave the rest to us and this is a scenario that nobody's touching nobody's touching neither alternative media nor mainstream media and i've been saying this for a long long time so this is the state where we are at again it's not going to help america if you lie about this case uh and and the implications it's not going to help america if you push any lies rather if you understand the bigger structures if you understand how skull and bones kind of these establishment uh, intelligence circles these families if you understand that these families skull and bone circles especially um they've helped the soviet union and they simultaneously hurt the soviet union they helped trump simultaneously hurt trump and this of course looks like a repetition of the old operation richard nixon nixon as we've learned in the uh, conspiracy book by Gary Allen, Nixon was uh, hooked up with the Rockefeller clan and they made him a big shot in politics. And he sold himself as an anti-establishment guy. And these Rockefeller types and other types who were publicly regarded as rather to the left, these uh, so-called leftists then publicly started to, to um, hate on Nixon. To give Nixon more credibility. And then Nixon got into the White House. And then Nixon got... Nixon got... Uh, Nixon's career got destroyed. Over some small operations. I guess you know the story. You know, a small story. A small thing. Uh, still legally significant. But small compared to what the NSA was doing. What the was, NSA was uh, continuing to do. Snooping on everybody while Nixon was just involved with a simple, or got caught in, with a simple wiretap operation. So, it didn't matter to the Empire that Nixon had to go. It was kind of part of the plan that Nixon went, and uh, the Empire continued. And so it will be when Trump is gone, the Empire will continue. Question is, how will the establishment play this Uh to uh, placate the Trump voters, to keep the patriots especially, the right-wingers especially, to keep them sort of happy and hopeful, at least hopeful. And there's some options, there's some scenarios. They, the, the establishment might give Trump another term. The establishment might decide, well, we're going to have Trump for more, four more years. 
you know, this works out. Trump does what we tell him to do. Um, he, Trump is, um, Trump is nominating and appointing all these CFR people and skull and bones people. You know, for the Federal Reserve and the Treasury and um, Homeland Security and everything else. So Trump is doing what we want. And, uh, and then after eight years, he will be gone. By that time, people will be sick of him. Even his voter base will be sick of him. And, and there's going to be a Democrat in for four years or eight years. And then maybe the establishment has a surprise. Maybe 2020 there's going to be a bigger conflict with the Russians and with the Chinese. Maybe that's what the establishment will do. And then Trump might get to pose as the strong guy, the strong president. You know, all the scandals are forgotten country will unite sort of kind of behind Donald and um, the elite will the establishment will conduct this war now these skull and bones these dangerous skull and bones people are now in all key positions and uh, yeah maybe this is the way this is gonna go and uh, we'll see what happens then with Alex Jones and Roger Stone maybe they will get pardoned and all will be forgotten and everybody's gonna be focused on this new war I'll be I'll be waiting to see what Infowars will say about this new conflict. If Infowars if Infowars uh, still exists in 2020 or 21 or 22 23. All right, this that's it for this video. And uh, of course, we'll be uh, keeping you updated on this case and all that matters and uh, please subscribe to this channel, comment down below, recommend us and visit us on uh, Patreon, support us on Patreon.